One, two, two, three. three. <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say that our friendship is effectively ruined. Eh, we weren't that close anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Title of this video, I break, break up with my boyfriend, <laughs> not, not clickbait. <laughs> Thinking up the audio. Oh, you've learned. <laughs> ah, here. How am I? I can't sit like this. <laughs> I can't. This is so horrible. We need depth of field in the background, you gobshite. Fucking depth of field. <laughs> I'm starting my own channel with backrests and comfortable chairs. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What are you doing? You've got to shine. I mean, that's because I'm... I'm being your makeup. That's because I'm fabulous. I shine like a diamond. We started off being friends years yeah. and years ago. And then we started dating last year. And then we started going out. And then he had to move to Spain. Tell them what you're doing. I'm learning to f drive a, a plane mobile. <laughs> and then he's coming home in a few months, but we've been doing long distance. And yeah, gonna be answering questions. Juicy, juicy questions. No, you can't lie down. Get back up now. I'm a suffer for my craft. <laughs> We've moved because <laughs> Thomas was sore in the corner of a little campus room, by the way. That's why nothing looks. Carly wants to know who made the first move. Fucking hell. Um, That's actually really hard to answer. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of like flirting and stuff like that, I don't know who started off. Because no. it was like probably about a, nearly a decade ago now. Yeah. When we met, we were both very eyeball -y. At each other like we were both kind of just smiling and just yeah. staring at each other suppose me because on the same night when we kissed we were gonna kiss before that in the hall remember yeah i was kind of like like hinting at it and i was moving a bit closer to you and then and then you were just like oh fuck it and <laughs> you were like i don't care so his best friend one of his best friends and my cousin um didn't want us to get together for years and years mm. and he warned us years ago not to ever kiss each other or be together mm. in a nightclub on a night out and it was when i'd first broken up with my ex was it or we were inching towards each other and he stood in the middle of us and he was like no no <laughs> And then it became this, like, forbidden thing. Yeah. And they, he brought it up again that night, remember? Yeah, he brought it up, so, like... And then I walked I walked past Mel, and I was just like, looks like I'm forg forbidden fruit. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were like, I no, was. you're not! So it's complicated, because he kissed me, but after that, I initiated further um, meeting up. Yeah. You, yeah. You definitely uh, that was me that that was you and you said yes of course <laughs> straight I did. away you said exactly what i was thinking megan asked how did you make that transition from friends to being in a relationship and was it awkward at all who initiated it etc um we were never really like we were friends but we were more like we ran race together and we like yeah. we would always talk to each other on nights out like i would always gravitate toward you and you'd always gravitate toward me but we weren't like let's hang out during the day and go to the cinema kind of friends nah no we weren't at all especially not on my end <laughs> <laughs> our friendship was always a flirty friendship and we were never like actually properly fully single at the same time yeah um I remember once in 2015 on new year's eve and i just started seeing someone and we yeah, were like someone <laughs> and i remember that night we were like if we're ever Single, single at the same time again this is happening yeah this needs to happen yeah, yeah I, I still remember that night so clearly because i remember being like way more attracted to you than i ever had been before that i was like it was a masquerade kind of <laughs> you were like yeah the, like a little mask thing on us like, yeah <laughs> no it was never it was never awkward going from friends to more than that we went from being flirty friends to just it, yeah. really fucking flirty <laughs> but it didn't feel strange or different at all when yeah. we were actually going out it felt like really natural really quickly um yeah. which i think is why because we were dating for quite a long time before we were like official it was like mm. a few months um and going from that i don't know who initiated being in a relationship i think we both kind of were saying things well it was after you came 
because I had my exams here and then you came over after my exams. Yeah. We were kind of, yeah, we were really couply the whole time you yeah, were here. We were, yeah, we were literally like holding hands everywhere. Yeah. So one of your friends out in the bar was just like, so are you together? And the two of us were just like, uh, y- yeah. 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 <laughs> it was when I got home, we actually like made it a fish or whatever, like over text. Yeah. I can't remember what it was. It was just some we conversation. We were talking about something. I was, yeah, I think I said to you, I was like, did we just enter into a relationship or did we just make it Facebook official or some shit I like that? Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, it was, we were both just like, uh, but I remember after that, I got, so, I, that whole day I was like so like, uh, like I, because I hadn't done that in such a long time, like the whole uh-huh. official relationship. I think I was like 19 the last time I I went into an official, actual like monogamous relationship. I was like, uh, <laughs> Thanks, darling. Like, my dad and my brother already knew him, and my... Shout out to Paul. And their, and their friends. We had, like, a mutual circle of friends, so it was a really, like, weird thing to, like, te- to like put that out there, that, like, we're, we're actually going out now. Our friend Sarah, who recently actually started a YouTube channel, said, if it wasn't for your beautiful and amazing friend Sarah, would you two have ever gotten out of the friend zone? Because <laughs> Sarah, like, I was having a bit of a mini crisis about all this and I didn't know where it was going. Like you weren't a very um, relationshipy person, shall we say, before before me. I suppose not, no. <laughs> and I didn't know, like, and Sarah was a, my little advisor, like, cause she lived with you, you lived together yeah. before. Um, I think she is massively responsible for this. Because she invited me to the party where we I'll kissed. never admit that, even if there's a fire. <laughs> Tilly says. What did Tilly say? <laughs> Tell me. How, how do you keep the flame burning when you don't see each other? Oh, because it's so sizzly oh, hot. It's so sizzly. Uh, <laughs> Skype. Pictures. Send each other things in the post like an old school person. <laughs> I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> I was a real romantic. I wrote, wrote a song. He wrote me a song. We just have a lot of communication. Like we, just, we, yeah. we make time to talk like multiple times throughout the day. And if it's not a day where we can Skype, um, we just text a lot. Yeah, like the, even, even like a little video can go a long way. Yeah. Like even just a five second video of me walking down the hall just being like, uh, I'm having a shit day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, Alessandra said, "What was it about Thomas that made you stop seeing him as a friend and made you look at him as something else?" <laughs> oh my god. Okay, like again, you were always that friend who I thought was a bit sexy, and like I would go there. Yeah. But at the same time, I was still like, "You're my friend," and. I just didn't see you as a boyfriend type at all. Um, what made me see you as like not a friend as in would have been just what made me attra- like physically attracted to you was probably because the party we were at when we kissed, like everyone kept <laughs> tearing your shirt open. And you had, yeah. you had this big tattoo on your body that I didn't know was there and you had like a piercing on your nipple and all. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, this is my friend's body. I shouldn't be looking at this. And I was all like, I got all bashful. <laughs> Bash- you got bashful. I did. They kept ripping my shirt open. And then when I eventually got bored and just said, fuck it and left it open, then I they had, were slagging then they were like, stop being such a wanker. Put your shirt back on. <laughs> Oh god, it was so funny. In terms of seeing it as more of like a boyfriend type or whatever, I don't actually, I think it was just the way you, the way I felt around you when I came here to stay with you and the way you treated me, like you were really, really respectful and you were really chivalrous and very, very charming and very caring and like looking out for me and always wanted to know how I was and you were you would get me things if i needed things things and like yeah you were yeah. just you just looked after me and you just yeah i was like he's a daddy spooky ghoul said how do you deal with arguments and such when and if you have them when you're also dealing with a long distance relationship we both have very different ways of dealing with arguments don't yeah. we melanie I have a let's sit down and just talk this shit out approach. And Melanie has a get away from me. (laughs) (laughs) I like to go quiet and give silent treatment when I'm angry. Sorry. 
that's okay because I'm very much the opposite. So I just kind of break down your silent wall. You do. Lazida asked, what's the positive thing about long distance relationships? You list the positive thing and I list the positive thing. We are forced to be good at communicating. That's really Literally true. Literally forced. Yeah. <laughs> I think it, it makes you really, really appreciate them when you see them. Because like mm. the time when you have a visit planned and this is one thing I'll always say about long distance don't would you agree that like there has to be an end date like you have to at least know that you're eventually going to be together yeah in, in having a specific time to look it, forward to yeah like it, long distance at first when there's no end date can work for a while because you're still kind of like oh yeah I have a new partner and this is fantastic yeah. but then eventually one person or both people are going to be like right when are we actually going to be in the yeah. same room together for <laughs> yeah. an extended period of time um, and having like um, a visit to look forward to it's like you're literally so excited and building up toward it and it's it's like having a holiday plan do you know what I mean like you're just counting down toward it and then you don't take any second of your whole visit for granted like you, you like I I find that I I'm always kind of trying to like make sure I'm really present in the moment when I'm yeah. here and when you're at home because I'm like <laughs> <laughs> This is an interesting one. Does being in a straight relationship alter my bi identity? Any struggles and how does your partner respect that identity? Who um, said that? Lisa Alves. Shout out to Lisa Alves. Yeah. <laughs> Asking the real questions. <laughs> um I don't like I don't think it affects it at all like it's because all your sexuality is is like what you find arousing what you're attracted to um and if you're straight you like you are a straight man you are attracted to women there's loads of yeah. women loads of women attractive women like I'm attracted to men and women and there's loads of men there's loads of women it's not like um there's no difference because when you're with one person you're like with them and you choose them so I don't it doesn't yeah. aff I don't think it affects m how I feel about my sexuality like I still feel the same like I'll tell you when I think someone's hot yeah and you don't mind do you no really do you mind <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> he knew all this stuff way before we were together yeah so I was fairly clued in at the get go yeah have you ever, or would you ever, surprise your partner by showing up when they don't expect you? Do you want to tell them your plan and then the thing oh, you Jesus. did? Yeah. <laughs> so I found out that I was able to come home two days earlier than anticipated. So then I was like, for right. For Christmas. For Christmas, yeah. So I was like, right, I'm going to be super romantic. I'm going to come home early, show up the house with flowers, and be like, yo, baby, I'm back in my <laughs> pile of training shit in your across, uniform. across the sea. And then, like, you were like, oh, I'm going up to visit my pals up north for two days before you come home, but I'll be back the day you get home, so don't worry. So if you hadn't have said that, I would have showed up the door, and I would have been handing fecking your my dad. dad. What about handing your dad flowers? Just like, <laughs> right, where's the points? We'll wait till she gets home. <laughs> oh. Uh, no, I'm, re yeah. I'm really happy that I, like he told me because I, I just liked, like it kept me going so much more because that, that, yeah, that extra wait 48 was, hours. Yeah, and it was just so, so ever since then I've decided like I would never surprise visit. I would just rather he knew because mm. it made me so much happier no but then because i found out i had recently taken snapchat off my phone so he sent me a snapchat every day for a month it was like a, a snapchat advent it calendar it was so cute and it was like then one day he was like check your snapchat and i was like why and he was like just do it and i opened it and there was like all these random snap they were amazing what's your favorite thing about him and vice versa so what's your favorite thing about i was me? just gonna say probably your sense of humor i was about to say that as well yeah because <laughs> we just have the same stupid sense, sense of humor, humor yeah. you'll find out when you subscribe to the podcast coming soon we're gonna create a little podcast yeah you know? we're gonna wear each other's jacket yeah Gonna be so I'm gonna be retarded. wearing the jacket. the jacket. If you don't know about the jacket, you better know about the jacket. This is me and Argentinu coming at you. <laughs> Argentinu, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> this is Argentino, an old woman here. We literally just like know exactly how to make each other laugh, and we spend so much time laughing. We should be famous comedians. What do you mean we should? We are famous. Yeah, we're we're famous. We are the fame I. Beth said, are you both comfortable with pointing out and talking about other people you find attractive? That could be celebrities, strangers you see, or even people you know. Me and my boyfriend do this and it's actually fun to talk about. Um, it depends, but mostly yes, I think. Yeah. Like... I'm comfortable with it. I just, I don't know. I've never really been that... I don't really do that that much, though. I probably do it more than you. I think you do. I think you do it way <laughs> more than I do. <laughs> but no, if we're watching, like, we start watching Game of Thrones together, like, yeah. I'll just say, oh, this hot one, or this one, or, you know, I'll just yeah. say, oh, yeah, I think Tyrion's a little ride. <laughs> you stay away, Peter Dinklage. Christina asked, do you ever feel pressure to just have loads of sex when you're both finally together? I've been with my long-distance boyfriend for almost three years, and I sometimes feel bad if we don't have loads of sex when we get a few days together to make up for lost time. Um don't feel pressure to like no. i don't feel like i don't like, feel pressure i don't walk in like oh, here we go again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get I, off get of off. me <laughs> i think it depends like if you and your partner have different sex drives i think that can be an issue regardless of long distance or not mm. if you're living together or you live in the same country that's going to be uh, not not even an issue it's just kind of like it might bother one of you more than the other yeah but we don't i don't think i never think to myself oh god i'm gonna make sure that we have because i think it's quality over quantity yes definitely this is true this is very true but there's a lot of quantity there's a lot of quantity also. as well so yeah don't have that problem but I can understand why some people might feel like that, especially if you're doing yeah. it a long time. But when when you're talking about long distance, are you talking about like two weeks apart? Or are you talking about like a month apart or two months apart or six months apart? Because I think if people are, the longer they're apart, the more rampant they're going to be yeah. <laughs> when, they're, I, when they uh, are reunited. <laughs> but like even when I'm here, just... Uh, next question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we both have a very similar sex drive, yeah. so it, it works out. Nice. It's very excellent. <laughs> Lisa said, how do you stay independent in a relationship while still being an us? I tend to give up my personality to match the other person's and it happens so gradually I only notice once it's too late. Um, I feel like parts of our personality have merged. Because you were even saying, yeah. do you know the way you started doing noises that I do? Yeah. And I've started doing voices that you do. <laughs> Don't say <laughs> these <laughs> things to me. We have a huge amount in common, but we're also really different, I think. Like, we do have different interests as well. Yeah. Like, um... We, yeah. Go on, sorry, what you going to say? No, I was just going to agree with you. Like, yeah, we have, yeah. A, we have a lot... We already we already had a lot in common though. Like we have similar taste in music. Yeah. Similar sense of humor. Same kind of films we like. Same kind of films. We like going out. We like drinking. We like the same food. <laughs> Definitely like the same food. Being long distance, I guess, kind of almost forces you to stay independent because you have to spend so much time apart. So yeah. you spend more time with your separate friends and all that kind of thing. But I think even when we do live together, we've said this like we're gonna make sure to keep our own lives yeah. while still sharing life it's really hard though it's like it's really hard because I, I think it's just a natural thing when you're with someone that a huge a huge amount of your life overlaps yeah it's it's a natural thing that's gonna happen yeah like at the end of the day you're you're in love yeah. she's like my limb now it's yeah. just like see uh, I know uh, yeah when you're um, not there I literally have this weird like <gasps> Yeah, you, ha you feel like something, I don't know, around this area is just gone. Yeah. I don't know what it is, it's like an emptiness or something like that. It's, it's strange, mad. it's weird, it, like it's a physical feeling. Yeah. I just think maintain your hobbies that, that are not shared hobbies and maintain your friends that aren't yeah. shared friends and still just keep doing all the things that you did before you were together yeah. and make time for each other and nothing should change. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> Just, just be yourself and be your your with your partner at the same time. It's not it's hard. Simple, stupid. We're both busy people. We have our own lives, and then we're just together as well. Beth asked. What she asked. Sorry if this might be a bit too personal, but I was wondering if it was awkward to have sex together for the first time, um, just based off you guys being friends for so long before. <laughs> right. 
I think it was at the start. Do you not remember me laughing and doing laps of the room and just being a fucking idiot? Yeah, that was funny. You were just like, come here. And I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> See, At the time, though, I didn't notice that you were being nervous. It wasn't until oh. afterwards you were like, oh, yeah, I was really fucking nervous. Yeah. Um, I had a little bit of the nerves, but... I don't know, it wasn't too bad. I think that time compared to any other times, it was so much more f- full of nerves. Do you not think? Well, yeah. Like, I, yeah. It was just weird because it was you. I was like, I was so aware of that. I was like, there's no going back after this. And it was yeah. intended to be a one night stand in my eyes. <laughs> Thanks. That's what I thought it would be, because it was you. Well, yeah, there was there was no way to know really at the stage, because like I was I was heading off to Spain and I didn't know what what if you'd wanted long distance. I didn't know if I'd want a long distance. I yeah. didn't know. We didn't know anything. We didn't at have that a clue. Stage. It was so scary for like two months or three months. The two of us didn't have a clue what was going on, and we both but we were constantly talking. Like nothing was different, but we weren't together. Mm. So we were both very like, Ooh, so uh, confusing. Feelings, <laughs> I've caught feelings. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Get your hands <laughs> off me. We're gonna go. I have to go <laughs> home tomorrow. I've been here for a fucking month. If you don't know already, I started monthly vlogging, so. I have oh, a monthly yeah. vlog up already of this trip. Featuring Featuring moi. lots of this gobshite and lots of our little adventures around it's Spain. It's the Tommy Takeover Hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave any more questions below about long distance relationships and I can answer some of those. So, I love you. I love you also. Do you? No way. Yeah. Mad. What a coincidence. Oh my God. We're so lucky. Yeah. 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 Again. 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 The end. <laughs> <laughs>